Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. This morning is Bible Sunday, and as every Bible Sunday every year, we will be looking at certain aspects of the Word of God. And this morning, we're going to be talking about coming to Christ with the Word. Coming to Christ with the Word. So let's just dive right in into the Word of Christ in John chapter 5. And the Father who sent me has himself borne witness about me. His voice you have never heard, his form you have never seen, and you do not have his word abiding in you. Why? For you do not believe the one whom he has sent. So instead of doing that, what were people doing? You search the scriptures because you think that in them, in the scriptures, you have eternal life. That's what you're looking for. You're looking for eternal life and you're searching the scriptures for it. And it is they, it is the scriptures that bear witness about me, yet you refuse to come to me that you may have life. So the scriptures is actually about Jesus Christ. And people have been searching the scriptures, thinking that by searching the scriptures alone, they would have eternal life, but do not come to Jesus. And so they miss out on eternal life. They miss out on the abundant life that Christ has come to give to people. And so you think that you have eternal life by looking at the scriptures, but the scriptures is about me, he says, yet you refuse to come to me. So this is what we want to be talking about uh, this morning, to come to Jesus Christ with the word. When we read the word of God, we are not just reading the word of God, not just reading the Bible passages or verses, but we want to read in order to come to to Christ. Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one who accuses you, Moses, on whom you have set your hope. So that be reading Moses, uh, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. For if you believed Moses, you would believe me. You would believe, you would believe in Jesus, for he wrote about Jesus. And if you do not believe his writings, how will you believe my words? So what is called the content really of Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. These books, these words actually, the whole of scriptures point to Jesus Christ. And that is why we want to talk about what to do with the scriptures this morning. Now, we should pour over the scriptures. We should study the historical context, the literal, literary context, the form, its structure, movement, passing words and grammar in the Greek and Hebrew. I, I do that every day. Every time I come before the Bible, uh, I do all these things. I look at the historical context, the literary context, its form, its structure, its movement. I pass words and grammar in the Greek and Hebrew. Uh, I write papers and I just pour over, over the scriptures. And that is a big part of what I do when I come before the Word of God. But that is not the main thing why we should come before the Scriptures. And I feel qualified to talk about this because I think that I'm among those people who, who really look through the history, the language, the literary, and the form, and the structure, and all of that. But I want to say this morning that Christ, must be the prize of our scripture reading. When we read the scripture, the purpose, the goal is Jesus Christ. So what are some of the things about Jesus Christ that we want to have when we read the Bible? Number one, we should read to find pointers to Christ. When we read the Old Testament, we shouldn't just be reading about the stories of Adam and Eve and uh, Cain and Abel and, and Noah and Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, Joshua, the judges, the kings, the prophets. Yes, we read these stories and these accounts, but we need to read with the eyes that these stories all point to Jesus Christ. All of Scripture is to declare to us who Jesus is. So we do not just want to search the Scriptures thinking that by searching them, we will have eternal life, but we want to come to Jesus because these scriptures testify concerning who he is. So that is number one. And number two, we should also read to learn facts about Christ. We need to know that he is loving. When we read the Gospels, we, we know that he is loving. When we read 
the Gospels, we know that He's the truth. When we read the Gospels, we know that He's the light of the world. When we know, when we read the Gospels, we we know that uh, He He did miracles, signs and, and wonders. He healed people. He gathered disciples. He 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 told parables, and all these things are facts about Christ. We should also read to learn facts about Christ. But more than that, more than all these things. And this is my burden this morning. Uh, we should read the scriptures as the means to come to Christ. Coming to Christ with the scriptures. Now, what does that mean? How do we come to Christ? By reading the scriptures. Uh, we come to Christ through prayer, right? When we pray, we come to Christ. Of course, by faith, we cannot be doubting. We cannot have us in a, be in a state of unbelief, but we have to have faith. So we pray uh, through faith and with humility, we come before the Word of God, we come before Christ, we humble our hearts with a uh, contrite heart and blessed are those who are poor in heart for they shall see God. So uh, we read, of course, the five pointers to Christ, facts about Christ, but more than that, and this is my emphasis this morning, to read the scriptures in order to come to Christ through prayer, faith, and humility, which is basically to uh, take the Word of God, you read it, and then you use the Word of God as the content and the basis for your prayer, because the purpose of it all is to come to Christ, not just to know a fact here or a fact there or some doctrines. These are all good. These are all valid. We should all do that, and I recommend it. But more than all this is to come to the scriptures in prayer so that we can come to Christ through or with the Bible, with the word of God. So here's an, here's an easy example, John chapter 6. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, This is a hard saying. Who can listen to it? After this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer walked with him. So Jesus said to the twelve, do you want to go away as well? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life, and we have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. And Jesus answered them, Did I not choose you, the twelve, and yet one of you is a devil? He spoke of Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, for he, one of the twelve, was going to betray him. Now, there are many facts going on here. Uh, some of the facts that you're able to uh, you get from this passage is, for example, well, there were disciples, but some disciples turned back. But uh, would the twelve turn back? Simon Peter said, no, we will not turn back because uh, Jesus has the words of eternal life, right? I mean, you come to Christ to have eternal life. And we have believed and come to know that you are the Holy One of God, that He is the Messiah, the Christ. But then there will still be some who uh, would betray Him and would not turn to Him. Yet one of you is a devil. So after finding out about these facts, then uh, what I would do is that I would turn it into a prayer. I say, Lord Jesus, I come before you. Uh, there are many people who turn away from you, Lord, and it is so easy to turn back and no longer walk with you because some of these sayings are really hard. Lord, I don't want to go anywhere else. You have the eternal life. I believe in you. There is no one that I want to go. No one else, Lord, has the words of eternal life. You have the words of eternal life. So, Lord, speak to me right now. I want to be in fellowship with you all the time. I don't want to be like Judas Iscariot. I don't want to ever betray you. I don't want to ever leave you. I don't want to, be, uh, to ever turn back from you. No matter how hard the saying is, no matter how difficult it is for me to understand. Maybe I do not understand. Maybe I'll never understand. But what I want to do is to always come to you. Lord, to whom shall I go? I will not go anywhere. I will not go away as well. With you is the words of eternal life. And I have believed. Lord, I believe in you. 
I trust in you. I've come to know you. You are the Holy One of God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And so that is how you turn the Word of God into prayer. And by doing that, you come to Christ. All right. So you read the Word of God. We should always read the Word of God. We should study the historical context, the literary context, all of that. And we should ask ourselves, what does this verse mean? What does that verse mean? We don't want to get that wrong. But more than that, we need to go beyond that. Instead of just reading and say, ha, ah, this means so much to me. Well, if it means very much to you, then turn that part that means a lot to you into a prayer so that it can come into contact with Christ. We don't want to search the scriptures thinking that in it we have eternal life, but refuse to come to Christ. Every time when we come before the word of God, our goal, the prize is communion with Christ because him alone has the words of eternal life. Now they say, right, Stephen, this is an easy example, right? But the Bible is not all like this. Some of these Bible verses are really hard. Can you really turn those into prayer as well? So I have uh, selected a hard example, right? This is Daniel chapter 8. If this is not hard, I do not know what is hard. In the third year of the reign of King Belshazzar, who is that guy? A vision appeared to me, Daniel, after that which appeared to me at the first. And I saw in the vision, and when I saw, uh, I was in Susa, the citadel, which is in the province of Elam. Now, at this point, you may want to take on the map, and that is good because you want to find where Susa is, who King Belshazzar is, well, where in this Persian history we're at, province of Elam. And I saw in the vision, and I was at the Ulai Canal. I raised my eyes and saw, and behold, a ram. And you want to maybe imagine in your mind a ram standing on the bank of the canal. It had two horns, and both horns were high, but one was higher than the other. And the higher one came up last. So the, there's a there's a lower one, and then there's a higher one. And I saw the ram charging westward and northward and southward. No beast could stand before him, and there was no one who could rescue uh, from his power. He did as he pleased and became great. And you're like, I have got no idea what's going on. All right, there's a ram, and there's a ram. There's one horn. There's two horns. One is higher than the other. The higher one came out last. All right, and then it rampaged everywhere. No beast could stand before him. Uh, no one could rescue from his power, and he just did as he pleased and became great. And you sit there and wonder what is going on with this paragraph. And then as you're considering this paragraph, as Daniel was considering, verse 5 says, As I was considering, behold, a male goat now come from the west across the face of the whole earth without touching the ground. You go, what? <laughs> right? This is really, really strange. A male goat coming from the west without touching the ground. Okay. And the goat had a conspicuous horn between his eyes. So is that like a, a unicorn goat or something? And he came to the ram with the two horns, which I had seen standing on the back of the candle, and he ran at him in his powerful wrath. I go, oh, oh, that ram was like so powerful, isn't it? No no beast to stand before him. So what's going on? What is this goat uh, chasing down this ram? But, okay, he came close to the ram. He was enraged against him and struck the ram and broke his two horns. Wow, the goat defeated the ram. And the ram had no power to stand before him. So the 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 ram was really powerful. And now when the goat was even more powerful, but he cast him down to the ground and trampled on him. Alright, so this goat is, is much greater than that ram. And that ram is already very, very... Uh, powerful, and there was no one who could rescue the ram from his power. Then the goat became exceedingly great, but when he was strong, the great horn was broken. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, so not that, not the best. Uh, uh, after all, and instead of it, there came up four conspicuous horns toward the four winds of heaven. And, and if you're lost by now, I can understand that. And, and it's really, really strange. And maybe you don't understand what is going on. Maybe you need to read a commentary or two. Uh, you need to ask Python, what does this all mean? And he may, he's going to tell you uh, his interpretation of it. And, and you're like, okay, I'm going to study this passage. But how do you turn something like that into prayer? How do you come to Christ? Because do not forget, the goal is to come to Christ 
for life. All right, we want to have life and to have it abundantly through Jesus Christ. So we don't want to lose sight of that. So although you may not understand, and then you, but you can still pray. So I'll be praying. Uh, for example, Lord, there's this ram, and there's this goat. Lord Jesus, what are these things? I have no idea. Who's the ram? Who's the goat? What is the ram? What is the goat? I know what a ram is. I know what a goat is. But I've got no idea what's happening in this passage. But they sound terrifying. They sound really powerful. They sound really destructive. And should I be fearful of them? Lord, I'm not fearful of them. I'm not fearful of rams. I'm not fearful of the goat. Because I believe, Lord, you are more powerful than the ram of the world, than the goats of the world. No matter how powerful all these beasts become in my life and around me or the surrounding or which country, which nation, which power, which superpower, which empire, Lord, I do not fear them because you are way more powerful than any of these beasts. You have conquered the enemy. You have conquered Satan. There is no need for me to be fearful of uh, whatever these rants and these goats would signify. In fact, Lord, even I do not know, even though I do not know what are these rants and what are these, what, what is this goat, but Lord, before this, I was doing something else. Before this, I was watching TV. Before this, I was playing computer games. Before this, I, ha I, was, uh, I was having an argument with my spouse. But Lord, ever since just now, when I came before your word, I turned open the Bible. I turn open Daniel chapter 8 as I read them, although I don't know what it means, but right now, my heart is turned to you. Right now, I'm turning myself to Christ. Right now, I'm having fellowship with you. Right now, I confess my sins. Thank you, Lord, that even through such a passage that I do not know what it means, but this simple act of just coming to your word, knowing that I come to your word in order to gain Christ, in order to have fellowship with Christ, in order to come to Christ. So I come to you. Thank you, Lord, that your word has become the means for me to come into fellowship with you, for me to overcome the world, for me to overcome sins. Uh, thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Right? So what I've done there is that I, I use Daniel 8 as a springboard to just talk to Jesus. You don't have to like understand every phrase that is going on. The goal here is to talk to Jesus. Now, as you're watching TV, it's very hard to talk to Jesus. As you are uh, uh, doing the dishes, it is possible, it is good doing your dishes. Or when you're playing computer games, right? You're playing computer games, you're indulging in, in your flesh. There is no way. It's that hard to come to Jesus. But what you can do is that, all right, I want to come to Jesus. Although I've been watching TV, so what I'm going to do right now is that I'm going to open up the Bible. And then it says Daniel 8. But, but by this act of open, opening up the Bible, what happens is that my heart is turning to Christ. And I read the Word of God. I know that it is the Word of God. I trust that it is the Word of God. And I humble myself before the Lord and I read it. And maybe I understand. Maybe I don't. That is uh, that is a, a problem for a different day, but right now I just want to come to Christ. And that is uh, uh, what I do um, uh, on this particular uh, topic, right, about coming to Christ with the Word. So yes, you should pour over the scriptures, uh, the historical context, literary context, all of that, but Christ must be the price of our scripture reading. Yes, facts about Jesus, but more than that is that we want to read the scriptures as the means to come to Christ. We come to Christ through prayer, with faith, and in humility, a contrite heart. So coming to Christ with the word. Uh, this is Bible Sunday. God bless you and the Lord keep you uh, throughout the whole week.